Oh, wow, that was good Something content, Something happened guys. yesterday that is literally going to change the world. <gasps> Link. Oh, yeah, I Amen. saw this. Okay, this is actually, like, crazy. I think. I don't know if they're just blowing smoke up our ass, or, like, this is a big f deal. Fusion energy. Some crazy new energy, like, breakthrough, which is massive, potentially. Or it's just, you know, blowing smoke. I, I don't know. I'm not a physicist. Lawrence Livermore National Lab, National Ignition Facility, made the following happen. There's a tiny cylinder here at the end of this that you probably can't see. It's about so tall and this wide. Inside that was a, a small spherical capsule about half the diameter of a BB. 192 laser beams entered from the two ends of the cylinder and struck the inner wall. They didn't strike the capsule, they struck the inner wall of this cylinder and deposited energy. And that happened in less time than it takes light to move 10 feet, so it's kind of fast. X-rays from the wall impinged on the spherical capsule. Fusion fuel in the capsule got squeezed. Fusion reaction started. Like, I don't know how to turn it up. I've got this maxed out audio. Oh, I guess I can turn this up, hang on. This had all happened before, 100 times before. I might be able to turn it up. But last week for the first time, they designed this experiment so that the fusion fuel stayed hot enough right, it's maxed out now round enough for long enough that it ignited and it produced more energies than the lasers had deposited about two megajoules in about three megajoules out a gain of 1.5 the energy production took less time than it takes light to travel one inch kind of fast so this is pretty cool. Um, I have a special message to listeners who want to work on exciting, challenging, and important problems. We're hiring. <laughs> Everyone would love silence, science if this guy explained it all to us. I, I feel like there's got to be a dumb, more dumbed-down thing. The reaction made more energy than it took to cause the reaction to happen. What does that mean? I don't know. Someone just got to link it to me because I'm just too... Stupid. U.S. scientists. God damn it! Oh, Bill Nye. All right, let's go. Making a huge breakthrough. A I got to see what Bill Nye has to say. For the first time ever, researchers have been able to create energy from a fusion reaction. Now, Laura, I could explain all of this in great detail, <laughs> of course, but basically, it's a giant step towards a clean energy future without dependence on fossil fuels. So, uh, I'll ask you a question. Do you know <laughs> that the sun? The sun is a continuous fusion reaction. Naturally. Right? Has a continuous. Definitely. Do you really or not? This is, so a nuclear weapon can be like you, we had at the terminate World War II. We're splitting very large atoms apart. Uh, gave off tremendous amount of energy. But there's another amazing thing that happens in nature where you smash tiny, tiny parts of atoms together, protons, and they fuse and convert a tiny amount of their mass into energy, into heat, heat and light. And uh, that was the mythic hydrogen bomb. But for all this time, for 80 years, people have tried to, tried to get this idea where you could do it in a controlled fashion using a tiny amount of material. And the material would be uh, uh, hydrogen that has an extra neutron which has this marvelous word deuterium. And then if it has two extra neutrons, that's tritium. And so using lasers, they zap this container, this whole rum, uh, this gold thing with the deuterium in it, and the lasers create X-rays, and the X-rays create constructively interfering shock waves that get the thing to fuse mm -hmm. without a giant magnetic bottle and without the gravity of a star. Mm -hmm. And so this is the first time, by all accounts, they've gotten more heat out than they put in. And this is amazing. And So in here is the atom? How do they hold the atom in place when they're cutting it in half or splitting it? It's deuterium? I thought we're splitting an atom. I mean, I, I, you know what? I wish someone would, I need a picture book for this because words don't do anything for me. I am a picture learner. I need to see the atom. How are you holding this atom in place? I assume magnets. 
or something like from all directions is I, I don't get it splitting is fusion okay so they're combining an item adam how are they doing it i just want to see it oh god it's so like it's so small how are you doing this tiny to this tiny thing that is not grabbable i don't get it it's lasers sure you say lasers but like what the f does that mean I understand if I took a and I could you know, through an apple, I'm cutting it in half or, you know, you, you take, how does a laser push two things together? I'm as confused. Heat? Okay. How are you like, what the f It's so small. I don't get it. <laughs> you see where I'm confused? <laughs> Physics. Like you're just throwing key words at me. Lasers. Physics. Magnets. Okay, what the f I don't know. <laughs> what the f Heat! <laughs> God damn it. The fundamental car- This is for me. This is- this is what I maybe need, okay. Frequency of our universe is energy. God damn it. It lights our homes, <laughs> grows our food, powers our computers. We can get it lots of ways. Burning fossil fuels, splitting atoms, or sunlight striking photovoltaics. But there's a downside to everything. Fossil fuels are extremely toxic, Just nuclear waste as all. well, nuclear waste, and there are not enough batteries to store sunlight for cloudy days yet. And yet, the sun seems to have virtually limitless free energy. The sun shines because of nuclear fusion. In a nutshell, fusion is a thermonuclear process, meaning that the ingredients have to be incredibly hot, so hot that the atoms are stripped of their electrons, making a plasma where nuclei and electrons bounce around freely. Okay. Since nuclei are all positively charged, they repel each other. In order to overcome this repulsion, the particles have to be going very, very fast. In this context, very fast means very hot, millions of degrees. Stars okay. cheat to reach these temperatures. They are so massive that the pressure in their cores generates the heat to squeeze the nuclei together until they merge and fuse, creating heavier nuclei and releasing energy in the process. It is this energy release that scientists hope to harness in a new generation of power plant, the fusion reactor. On Earth, it's not feasible to use this brute force method to create fusion, so if we wanted to build a reactor that generates energy from fusion, okay. we have to get clever. To date, okay. scientists have invented two ways of making plasmas hot enough to fuse. The first type of reactor uses a magnetic field to squeeze a plasma in a donut-shaped chamber where the reactions take place. These magnetic confinement reactors, such as the ITER reactor in France, use superconducting electromagnets cooled with liquid helium to within a few degrees of absolute zero meaning they host some of the biggest temperature gradients in the known universe. The second type, called inertial confinement, uses pulses from superpowered lasers to heat the surface of a pellet of fuel, imploding it, briefly making the fuel hot and dense enough to fuse. In fact, one of the most powerful lasers in the world is used for fusion experiments at the National Ignition Facility in the US. These experiments and others like them around the world are today just experiments. Scientists are still developing the technology. And although they can achieve fusion, right now it costs more energy to do the experiments than they produce in fusion. The technology has a long way to go before it's commercially viable. And maybe it never will be. It might just be impossible to make a viable fusion reactor on Earth. But if it gets there, it would be so efficient that a single glass of... Uh, how old is this video? This is a six-year-old video, so keep in mind. ...water could be used to produce as much energy as burning a barrel of oil, with no waste to speak of. This is because fusion reactors would use hydrogen or helium as fuel, and seawater is loaded with hydrogen. But not just any hydrogen will do. Specific isotopes with extra neutrons, called deuterium and tritium, are needed to make the right reactions. There's that word. Deuterium is stable and can be found in abundance in seawater, though tritium is a bit trickier. It's radioactive, and there may only be 20 kilograms of it in the world, mostly in nuclear How warhead. How much? ...and there may only be 20 kilograms of it in 
in the 20 kilograms in the world? Oh my God. Or tw- tw- even, whatever, kilos, whatever the f it is. That is like in the world? In the world, mostly in nuclear warheads, which makes it incredibly expensive. So we may need another fusion buddy for deuterium instead of tritium. Helium-3, an isotope of helium, might be a great substitute. Unfortunately, it's also incredibly rare on Earth. But here, Fuck. the moon might have the answer. Over billions what? of years, the solar wind may have built up huge deposits of helium-3 on the moon. Instead of making helium-3, we can mine it. If we could sift the lunar dust for helium, we'd have enough fuel to power the entire world for thousands of years. One more argument for establishing a moon base, if you weren't convinced already. This feels like... Okay, maybe you think building a, a video sun game still sounds kind of dangerous. But they'd actually be much safer than most other types of power plant. A fusion reactor is not like a nuclear plant, which can melt down catastrophically. If Chernobyl. the confinement failed, then the plasma would expand and cool, and the reaction would stop. Put simply, it's not a bomb. The release of radioactive fuel like tritium could pose a threat to the environment. Tritium could bond with oxygen, making radioactive water, which could be dangerous as it seeps into the environment. Fortunately, there's no more than a few grams of tritium in use at a given time, so a leak would be quickly diluted. So we've just told you that there's nearly unlimited energy to be had at no expense to the environment in something as simple as water. So, what's the catch? Cost. We simply don't know if fusion power will ever be commercially viable. Even if they work, they might be too expensive to ever build. The main drawback is that it's unproven technology. It's a $10 billion gamble, and that money might be better spent on other clean energy that's already proven itself. Maybe we should cut our losses. Or maybe when the payoff is unlimited clean energy for everyone, it might be worth the risk. So, so what I picked up at the very beginning, they heat this shit up so f much that the electron just moves so fast that they break away. So it's just massive amounts of heat from lasers. It's heat. I was thinking like, oh, cut it in half or I don't know. Or no, they and then they smash and then they fuse because they just smash so hard because they're all over so quickly. Okay. All right. Pictures. Excellent. I understand. And what exactly is the breakthrough specifically that they have achieved? Um, I guess just doing it with lasers. They figured it out. What was the problem that was keeping them from doing it that is now causing this big breakthrough? It just works. Okay. They figured it out. They got more energy out than in. Okay. They can do it with a net positive energy, and that is important. I mean, what is the net positive? Is it just barely a little bit more so they can technically say that? Because I don't know. I guess it is making free energy, but it's like, if it's not that much of a positive, how big of a f facility do you need of this, do, like doing this like 50,000 times before it's like, you know, you can charge my cell phone? I don't know. I want to see these specifics. 1.5 times? Okay, that's pretty good. I need these, like, you know, stupid details. Because I just want to know. This is big. This is important. I thought it was a big deal. But very cool. Very cool. We like that.